Remember that this no-shunting nonsense must stop. So Topham Hatt then told Percy, Edward, and Thomas that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Clarabelle at the junction. The two coaches were very pleased to see Thomas again. Edward and Percy played with the freight cars. Stop, 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 screamed the cars as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the cars were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty cars to the quarry. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call. And they got... Tell about an engine and some tar wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like to be reminded of his own accident. Well, well, well. Surely, James, it wasn't you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He slouched sulkily away. James is cross, snickered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the freight cars to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward's station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These freight cars are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the freight cars up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Leave it to me, shouted Douglas. The conductor was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! The van... He liked shunting. It was fun playing with freight cars. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Then he would stop, and the silly freight cars would go bump into each other. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening? Edward played till there were no more freight cars. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon was cross. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a dirty freight train. A freight train, a freight train, a freight train, he grumbled. The shame of it. Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. He came over the top of a big hill. You can't catch us, laughed the trucks. Weesh! But there was trouble ahead. Duck had stopped at the crossing at the bottom of the hill. Arthur's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Squashed fruit flew everywhere. James's train had long trucks called well wagons. These have bogey wheels at each end with a low section between them. They're used to carry cars, tractors and other heavy machinery. The shunting should have been easy, but James was cross and bumped the trucks. Oh, 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 oh they cried. Some of them slipped their brakes on to spike James. His trains were late and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Donald, his twin, was angry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald. It's to leave you behind I be wanting. You can't, said the van. I'm essential. Ah, are you? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spite doggy, would you? Take that! Oh! Oh! cried the van. There's more coming should you misbehave. The van behaved better after that.
Until one day, Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. All right. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the trucks up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Leave it to me! shouted Douglas. The guard was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. Give up, give up! You can't pull us! You can't, you can't! called the car. I can and I will! I can and I will! puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last, they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster. Soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it! I'm doing it! He panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it! I've done it! Hooray! It's easy now! But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again! We've left our tail behind! Look! The last cars were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the conductor stopped the cars and got out to warn approach Pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it. I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it! I've done it! He panted. He was taking empty cattle trucks to a market town. The sun shone, birds sang. Edward was heading for trouble. Come on, come on, he puffed. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Edward puffed and clanked. The trucks rattled and screamed. Some cows were grazing nearby. They were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. As Edward clanked by, they broke through the fence and ran across the line. A coupling was broken, and some trucks were left behind. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to trucks. Bother those trucks, he thought. Why can't they come quietly? He was at the next station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and boasted. Fancy allowing cows to break your train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward Station. Boop, boop! Mind the cows! Hurry, Broken hurry! Up. What a shame! Broken up, what a shame! I must help Trevor, I must! He thought of all his friends who liked engines, but strangely, none of them would have room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame, he hissed. Then, beep, beep! Why didn't I think of him before? There on the platform was the very person. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air. 
and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. They were going well. His driver applied the brakes. Is there a problem, Mr. Oliver? Yes! There is! are you talking about the ghost train driver saw it last night where asked thomas and toby he didn't say oh it makes my wheels wobble to think of it <laughs> said thomas you're just a silly little engine i'm not scared the farmer had just gone for help Percy broke the cart to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. He puffed quickly to the nearest signal box. 